Hi everyone, <clears throat> Stepan here. I'm going to show you uh, a league game I played about three weeks ago. It's a game I really didn't want to show you, but I'm going to show you to you anyway. Uh, I think I played pretty well and uh, all things considered I was happy with how the game went. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. I'm facing a slightly higher rated opponent, about 150 points. Uh, he started with pawn d4, I responded with d5 and after knight f3 knight f6 c4 c6 he played e3 which is the quiet slav and in this quiet slav there's one upside for black uh, something that's different to when white plays knight c3 and that's the fact that white can get away with sorry black can get away with bishop f5 now, the way to punish bishop f5 is either knight c3 and trying to get this bishop or taking and playing queen b3. This is probably the most straightforward, where, where after queen c7, bishop to d2, uh, this pawn is going to be under pressure and there is compensation for white for the fact that the bishop uh, has been allowed outside of the pawn chain. But my opponent played queen b3 immediately, and the problem with queen b3 for black is that sometimes, and I'm going to explain in which types of positions, queen b6 doesn't work. And queen b6 doesn't work if the knight is still on b8 and if the white bishop can go out to f4. So the continuation, if this pawn was, for example, back on e2, would be c5, queen c7, and then bishop f4 which would gain a tempo on the queen because queen f4 would uh, allow queen takes b7. However, that doesn't work if the pawn is blocking the bishop or if the knight is still on b1. Why? Well, if the knight is still on b1, after queen takes f4, queen takes b7, there would be queen takes c1. So it's a bit complicated. In any case, in this position, uh, queen c7 is a good move because there is no bishop f4 either way. And what white ended up doing, white allowed this bishop outside of the pawn chain, white allowed an easy c5 pawn break by closing down the center on the c file, which now means that any e5 cannot be met with c takes d5. So at this point, black is fine, probably slightly better. Okay. Bishop to e2, knight bd7, standard castles, and now I had a choice between e5 and e6. Uh, I could have gone for e5 straight away, but I wasn't really sure uh, about giving up my bishop on b1, and I thought I had to give the bishop up. So if e5, then knight h4, and probably bishop b1 is the best move, and it, it actually is. I was correct during the game, rook b1, and now e4. And having this pawn on e4, does it compensate for my lost bishop pair? I wasn't sure, so I didn't want to go for that. I figured I could prepare e5 under more favorable circumstances, and after e6, there is no knight h4, and I'm going to explain why. If knight h4 now, then I play bishop e4, and f3 simply isn't possible because black uh, wins immediately. If f3, then bishop to b1 rook b1 and g5 and <clears throat> the knight is lost so after knight h4 bishop e4 the knight is for some reason on h4 the bishop cannot be won so after e6 my opponent continued knight c3 now there could be a threat of playing uh, knight h4 but i played bishop e7 anyway on knight h4, bishop e4, uh, knight takes, pawn takes, the, the knight is stranded, and white would have to play the move g3 to save the knight. Okay, so he didn't play knight h4, he played bishop d2. And now you can see why the position is better for, for black. This bishop is kind of bad, and black is the one with all the pawn breaks. Black is controlling e4 three times, so e4 can never be played by white. Whereas e5 is under black's control as well, so e5 can be played whenever black wants to play e5. In fact, I could even consider going e5 and the knight h4 retreating the bishop to e6. That's not bad. Okay, but I decided to castle 
and I hoped that my opponent would go knight h4. Okay, and he did. Now he shouldn't go knight h4. He should probably play rook c1 or retreat the queen and start playing for this queenside pawn storm because the pawn is on c5. So there really is nothing better to do. Okay, he played knight h4, but this is now a mistake that's... He, he's just going to have to go back. And the reason for that is knight g4. Now I'm threatening the knight, I'm threatening mate in one, uh, and the only move to save the game is knight back to f3. If bishop takes g4, then bishop takes g4. Now the knight has to defend mate, so knight f3, and after knight f3, g f3, b6, white's position is just collapsing. I'm gonna go b6 and or e5, and I spoke about the isolated h2 pawn when the king has castled kingside last week uh, with, with a friend of mine, and when there's an h2 pawn alone around the king, that's a target that cannot easily be defended, uh, especially if there's a pawn on f3, which is usually the case. So now black just starts an attack on, on both sides of the board. Uh, alternatively, if you don't play bishop takes g4, you could try f3, but that loses to mate in one, so that doesn't work. Uh, if you play g3, then just takes on h4. Uh, I, I don't know. We don't have to look at this. Also losing for white. So knight of three only move. And it's not that black gained all that much because the knight is on g4, but there's a variation that leads to an advantage for black. And I went for that. So bishop e4. Of course, this bishop cannot be taken. If knight e4... If knight e4, d4, uh, I'm threatening to take the knight, the only sensible way to defend would be to counterattack, but unfortunately white has two pieces hanging, so after something like this, black is just a piece up. Of course, the main idea behind this is that the threat is to dislodge the knight and checkmate on h2. So after this, h3 is forced immediately, but now bishop takes f3, and again, mate is threatened, you cannot recapture the bishop. So hg4 and bishop e2, knight e2. Okay, so why is black better? Well, black now gets to play e5. These pawns have been doubled. Uh, white's defenses are basically non-existent around the king. Uh, and I'm breaking through the center. <clears throat> now here, I don't know what white should play. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what the best move is. If I turn on the engine, the engine says minus one for black after queen d1, rook a b1, uh, rook a c1, f3. I wasn't really sure what white does here. He ended up playing f3, which I didn't understand at all. I don't get this move. <clears throat> uh, I mean, the idea could be bishop e1, bishop g3, but I think the knight wants to go to g3 and f5. So I wasn't really sure about f3. It's not that the g4 pawn needs defending. I mean, he could always go f3 if I play knight f6. Okay, so I just continued ed4, ed4. And now I was trying to make ideas like knight c5 work, but they don't work, unfortunately, because there is a bishop that could cover the check on e3. Uh, so yeah, I, I cannot play knight takes c5, so I played rook f8. Now, if he makes a mistake here, then yeah, I, I could go for knight c5. For example, he plays rook c1, then knight c5. And sorry, not, not rook c1 because that defends. So let's say rook b1. Yeah, now knight c5. And if this is taken, <clears throat> the knight is hanging, the bishop cannot go to e3. And of course, my queen covers the h2 square. So I played rook f8 to try and prepare ideas like knight c5. But he defended bishop f4. I'd expected this. Uh, queen c8, knight g3, the knight is coming to f5. And now I, I made the first mistake of the game. It's not a serious mistake, but it allows white to almost equalize. Now, it's obvious that the knight is coming to f5. And the main issue with that is not the g7 square, it's the d6 square. I don't want to give up my bishop, of course, uh, so I should have played g6 immediately. And 
g6 was just necessary. Uh, I thought I could gain a tempo with bishop f6, which is stupid, because the knight on f5 defends d4. And here's the thing, if knight f5, uh, I probably have to play something like knight f8. If I go g6, then of course he doesn't play knight d6, allowing me to take. He plays knight h6 check. And the king isn't enough because the bishop defends. And if I ever go g5, then the knight just goes back to f5. We check. Okay, so bishop f6 was a stupid move. I should have played g6. Luckily for me, he didn't play knight f5. And after knight f5, he could have been better, I think. More than equal, actually. Okay, so he played queen d3 defending the pawn, and now I'm back with my advantage because now I did play g6, which I should have played a move ago. Rook a1, knight f8. My idea is to put my knight on e6 and just win the d4 pawn, or at least provoke bishop e5, which would blunder... Uh, Black's control of the dark, white's control of the dark squares. Okay, he played knight h1, which is strange. I don't understand knight h1. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, of course, the knight has no future on these squares, but it's not like getting the knight to g5 is any better. Maybe knight f4 is better, but still. Okay, knight e6. And bishop e5. Now, bishop e5 is a blunder because it loses a pawn. I was actually hoping he would do this. Uh, <clears throat> I just play knight c5. So the idea behind knight f8 and knight e6 was to put pressure on d4, and of course, bishop e5 cannot be played. The reason bishop e5 cannot be played is knight c5. If he takes the knight, then I just take the bishop. Uh, if he doesn't take the knight, he has to move the queen. If he has to move the queen, I have time to save my knight. He played queen c2, and I just retreated. And this is now a clean pawn that's gone off the board. f4. And yeah, after f4, and by the way, this is white's only hope, uh, black is completely winning. I go bishop h4. And the idea behind bishop h4 is winning the pawn on g4. So whatever he does now, let, let's assume he moves the rook. If he moves the rook, I just take the bishop, take the pawn on g4. It's as simple as that. If he doesn't move the rook, I win the exchange. If he plays knight f2, I take on e5, take on f2, take on g4. My queen is on the g4 pawn. So the only move that had to be calculated was g6. <clears throat> but this still works, because knight e5. If he takes the bishop, I have knight f3 check, winning the exchange. If rook f3, then rook e1 check. So it doesn't work. He has to take my knight. He has a choice between taking with the f pawn and taking with the d pawn. I calculated everything correctly. If he takes with the f pawn, which it, which didn't happen in the game, I get a better position where I give up my queen for two rooks and two pawns. So if f e5, then queen takes g4. And rook uh, f4, I just take on f4. And this, I think, should be very good for me. I mean, my bishop is going to be covering the dark squares. Uh, I have, I'm two pawns up and I have two rooks for the queen. So materially it should be three points up for me. I don't think it's that easy, but I still think it's convertible. But in the game he took with the deep one. Now, practically speaking, this gave him excellent chances because he has this pawn storm going on the king side. However, it just, just loses a clean pawn. Queen takes g4, of course, the, the, the pawn is pinned. Okay, he played king g2, bishop e7, I had to retreat. Knight f2 attacks the queen, and I went back to d7. I should mention that queen f5, I don't, I don't think this is good. This is... I'm just going to lose this pawn. And all he has to do is something like rook h1, and these two pawns are, are very weak. So I played queen d7 instead. And I don't want to trade queens anyway. It's not like I'm afraid of his attack. We should both be afraid. Both positions are unsafe. The difference is that I'm a pawn up. Two pawns up, sorry. So g4. Uh, and now again, bishop h4. I, I want to take that knight and I want to push my d pawn. Simple. And I also want to win the g, g4 pawn. 
So he played a five. Uh, now I should have here found the move that converts easily, and that's queen to d8. Unfortunately, I didn't find this. Uh, now, if if he doesn't play f6, I'm going to play queen g5. If I play queen g5, his pawns aren't going anywhere. Simply because the g-pawn cannot advance because my queen is blocking it, I can always exchange on f2, and he has no pressure anymore. If he does play f6, then I just keep pushing with d4. And of course, this pawn storm isn't dangerous when the pawn is on f6. Instead, <clears throat> excuse me, I played d4 immediately. King h3 as expected. I took on f2. Takes on f2. Sorry, queen takes on f2. Uh, and now d3. Unfortunately, d3 is a blunder. Uh, instead of d3, well, if you turn on the engine, the engine says g5 is the only move that gives black a winning advantage. g takes f5 is also okay. King h8 is also okay. Uh, d3 seemed very natural to me. There's a line that's a forced draw after d3, and it starts with queen d2. Now, of course, the main issue is the g7 square and these two pawns. The position is not easy to play at all for black. In fact, it's very hard to play. And the way to draw this is king to h8, e6, f6, f6, rook e6. But the problem is, since the queen is now on d2, there are checks. So queen c3, king g8, and he just keeps spinning me. Queen b3, and eventually I'm going to lose this rook. The engine finds a draw. I'm not sure I would have found the draw. This seems extremely complicated to me. Uh, so takes... Uh, sorry, rook takes, rook takes, I probably play something like king g7 here, queen c3, king g8, and this should be a draw by repetition, queen b3, queen c3. Now that's an insane draw. Instead, he played queen f4, which doesn't allow these checks on the dark squares, uh, because I can cover them. And... Unfortunately, I lost the game in one move here. I was afraid of my dark squares. Of course, the queen is coming to h6. The pawn is coming to f6. Uh, so I, I played an incredible blunder. And as it always happens, I knew that it was a blunder before he made his move. I knew what I did. What I should have done here is very simple. I played d4, I played d3, now I go d2 and I win the game. There is no other move. Rook d1 is forced. Any other move, I just make a queen and win a whole rook. And now I go rook ad8, and I'm ready to infiltrate. And that's it. This is my plan: is queen d3, rook d4, queen e3, or or rook e4, and get my rook to e8. At the same time, this king is very unsafe. I don't know what to suggest for white. The engine says rook f2. If e6, then I can just take this. I, I don't think there's a threat here. Everything's covered. If this rook is out of play, then I have no issues at all. Instead, I made probably one of the worst moves on the board, other than like queen d6 or queen e6. I played queen e7. And this loses by force. And it's a it's actually a two-move forcing sequence after which black resigns. Two moves. Of course, he plays f6. And I have to go queen f8, otherwise he mates me. Uh, and now he goes e6. And that's it. Uh, I played on, on for a couple more moves. Let me show you what the problem is. Now, when I played queen e7, I saw the final position. And of course, I didn't take the pawn. Uh, so if rook e6... Rook e6, rook e6, f6, f7, check, uh, king h8 or king g7, doesn't really matter, queen e5. The only way, way to save checkmate and f8 equals queen is going to be mate uh, after rook f8, rook f8 mate. So on e6 I cannot take. Uh, if I move my queen I get mated on g7. Uh, 
soaking h8 and now e7 and it's all over uh, the problem is he's just going to get in on the d8 square and and make a queen eventually so queen g8 i'll just show you the last few moves i played yeah here i resigned uh he also could have played queen h6 it doesn't really matter what i did it's it's over after e7 it's over after queen e7 i just played hoping i don't know i don't know if you know that feeling when you're completely losing and you keep on playing it's a weird feeling okay so that was i think this was round eight of the creation league i'm going to show you the next round uh tomorrow this wasn't an easy game to deal with but yeah okay uh hopefully you got something from this game let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess bye bye